in this video I'm going to go ahead and clean the heads, the pinch roller and the cap stand. For example, like a dirty head, playback head can cause, it can cause like you might have a signal drop out or it might sound kind of muddy. And what you want to do here is remove the, the dirt, the dust and the oxide. A lot of times it looks like rust on there. That's the, that's the oxide. I'm going to use my cleaning fluid here. You could use isopropyl alcohol, 91%, um, which is available in a lot of places. That works really good. There's a weaker, weaker version too. It's I think it's 70 some percent. You can use that too. You just got, might have to put a little bit more elbow grease into it. So what I do is simply take that cotton swab here and I go ahead and wet it with my cleaning fluid and then I go ahead and start the cleaning process. I'm going to go ahead and try to get a little closer here. I'm going to clean this. I think this is the erase head and I just use like a side to side motion not an up and down motion side to side and clean that till it's clean. You might have to clean it a couple couple of times it's really dirty I've had somewhere I had to clean them like hmm, more than a couple of times I'll tell you that like that and then over to the pinch roller which I had already cleaned in the other video about the replacement of the pinch roller and then just the cap stand like that clean it up and down and that's it it's really pretty easy but like with these old boom boxes like very important because they can sound like crap if the heads are all dirty oh also I just clean mine whenever they look dirty but you can do it more often if you want the way I learned it a long time ago you were supposed to clean them about every 20 hours of use of course now I'm going to move on to the demagnetization part. If, if your heads or any other parts are magnetized, you can hear like you can have like a loss in high frequencies, or you hear like a hissing sound. This only takes very little time to do. So if you have one of these demagnetization units, I would go ahead and get one. I got mine off of eBay. It was actually man, I don't even think it cost ten dollars so there are two basically two rules here what you want to do is make sure that your equipment is not plugged in when you do this and you also want to make sure when you demagnetize let's say for example a head you don't want to sh you don't want to shut it off you don't want to shut the demagnetizer off or when it's right by the head you want to move away from the head about a foot away from the head or so and then just as a safety measure it's, you probably could get away with shutting it off earlier but just let's just say about a foot and then you go ahead and you shut it off I'm going to go ahead and plug my demagnetizer in so and how do I know if it's working there See, it just picked up that paper clip also, if your demagnetizer doesn't have like a protective tip on here and it's just metal, you're going to go ahead and have to wrap some tape around it to protect the heads. You know, you don't want to mar them all up or scratch them up. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the demagnetization. I'm going to start with the erase head and I'm going to do the playback record head and then I'm going to do the cap stand. I'm slowly going to come in. Going to hold it there for a couple seconds. And then I'm going to slowly move over to the playback record head right here. In fact, when I'm on that, I can feel like a little vibration. And once I'm done with that, and I'm going to go ahead and move over to the cap stand. Hold there for another 10 seconds or so. You can do 10 seconds each. 
and then slowly move it away to about one foot away and then I'm going to go ahead and shut it off and that's it that was an easy job